we have some people who've indicated they want to ask questions. Um, perhaps I can just start this with, um, I'm very curious about the role of the work coach. So perhaps I can start with a question. Yes. Um, if, if a young person, Right, we're in a situation now where we know there are jobs at Tesco. We yes. know the jobs at Tesco, yeah. And yet other employers are creating jobs, but they're not in the public domain. So there's a lot of reliance on the work coach to understand the vacancies and match young people to them. So I just wonder what the thinking behind that is and why young people aren't able to see what the kickstart opportunities are so sorry elizabeth i might i might answer your question with a question when you say that they are, they are in the public do you, do you mean that the young people can't see the vacancies for themselves yeah yeah um well i think there's two answers to that question the first is um i guess partly in relation to what we talked about earlier which is that from our perspective that work coach work coach to customer relationship is absolutely key to everything we do on universal credit and i think there is a risk that if we just say to a young person there's you know hundreds of vacancies here that that might um um i guess raise expectations when actually the work coach might be looking at the young person and thinking you're not quite ready for this yet so i think there's a view there that it could actually cause more problems than the other way around it which should be about that um, through the claim and commitment interviews, through the work search reviews, the um, uh, work coach developing that really good relationship with the young person so they can effectively triage where they should go and actually say, actually, I think these look to be the best sorts of vacancies for you now, you know, wh whoever they are. That said, that said, um, I'd go back to what I said at the beginning, which is that we have stood up, I think, what I would describe as almost a minimum viable product for Kickstart to get it off the ground, which in essence means that people can apply, we can assess, we can pay and we can refer. So actually, Elizabeth, it's a good point and I will take it back and feed it into some of my colleagues in the policy teams. But I suspect it will be more or less what I've said, which is that we expect the kind of that the, the work coach to be the conduit between. And there is then that risk that if we just say to a young person, there's loads and loads of jobs here, that someone will actually think, well, you know, we can't. Yeah, this isn't going to work. But I will take it away. It's a good point. OK, um, I can. So this is the point, the time of the meeting. I just thought I'd start off with that. When if you raise a hand, I will bring you in and you can ask. Um, your questions direct to Nick. I can see hand raised. Um, I can see two now. But if I can bring in Tracy Fishwick first, please. Thanks, Elizabeth. Hi, Nick. Um, Hi, just... Hi, Tracy. Hi. We're a gateway in Liverpool. Um, I just wanted to follow up on Elizabeth's point about. Um, the role of the work coach and young people and how given the scale of, of what we're, we're facing um how we can empower young people a little bit more and i know that this is early days and you are as you say getting the basic yeah. um sort of platform if you like in place um but where work coaches do think young people um on uc are ready for kickstart can they not be given something as young people that says almost like a card <laughs> that says um you know says that because i think there's also a scenario where young people could be approaching employers and saying hey if you recruit me i'm free um and 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 that that could actually generate a lot more jobs and we can work out the the wiring afterwards but that would get a lot of young people kind of moving in a way. And that would mean that work coaches are focused on those young people that might need that extra support and guidance and, and all the rest of it. Um, so I'm just flagging that. I just think that's a really uh, useful thing. And it's been raised by a few people with me um, that, that would be good. And it would bring more jobs in as well. 
Do you know? Do you know? Do you know what, Tracy? I mean, and I should have said this. Sorry, Elizabeth, at the beginning. I, I think the beauty of a session like this is that you know. I think we're 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 a long way away, if ever we were there, to be honest, for thinking that DWP has got the answer to all of these questions. And I will say that I just that's just not something that we considered. But I agree with you. It sounds like a really good idea, and it also sounds like a. And perhaps not every young person would do this, but how great would it be, right, for the young person to wander down the road with their Kickstart card, let's call it like that, and say to the employer that they've known for a number of years, why aren't you involved? in this come on yeah. pick me so i that's a, that is a that's a brilliant idea i really like that that's absolutely great and then it would take a i think it would help us make sure that we see that steady flow of quality opportunities coming through for the young people but it also then i agree it does absolutely it does absolutely talk about empowerment I, re I really like it tracy i really do yeah well we're happy to work with you on that there's a few of us and there's some businesses that are, that are keen to to take that idea forward and and just we've got a, a round table with young people on friday talking about it i'll, I'll leave it there's t there's loads more questions i'll leave that but thank you can i can i just say one other thing elizabeth as well sorry just for colleagues yeah. that might be a bit concerned there is no way that my next slot will take an hour by the way just in any way shape or form so if if people are if people are worried they're going to run out of time to ask questions i don't think they will to be honest because okay. the gateway piece i will talk about it and we'll talk about it whenever but it's it's that's not going to take as long as the first section did just to reassure okay great thank you thank you um, that's it yeah, I, I'm really glad Tracy asked that question because it has come in from a number of Ursa members. We've got some questions just in case people don't get a chance to raise their hands about young people taking the initiative. So uh, that was really a welcomed response, Nick. Um, the next hand I can see is Vicky Walters. Do you want to come in, Vicky? Sorry, I'm trying to unmute. You're you're unmuted. No, you've gone back on mute. Foster. I think it's probably because there's so many people on Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah there you are. We can see you, Vicky. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. Fab. Okay. I'm not going to try the camera, if that's okay. Um. So, um, at the moment, it's saying that universal own, um, universal credit only as eligibility for a young person. Yeah. What if a person is on um legacy ESA, and they apply? Because that would then trigger a change of circumstance potentially to universal credit um at the moment the scheme is only um i'm not i mean i did used to run legacy benefits i'm trying to work out whether it would or wouldn't um i i think if if a young person transitions from uh, uh it's not a very not i don't like the terminology but if a young person transitions from a legacy benefit onto uc they would be eligible um they wouldn't be eligible for kickstart at the moment if they are on a legacy benefit but it is something that we're looking at just in terms of the wider eligibility around the scheme and i did i have seen elizabeth in the sidebar and, and perhaps you'll take us through those if we can later on lots of questions about the spotlight check and what does this look like and what do what do we get assessed at so we are, we are looking at all of these elements vicky but at the moment um if you are on a legacy benefit you you cannot apply for kickstart Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, the next name I see is Arit. You, would you like to come in, please? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much, Nick, for your time this morning. I found the information that you gave around what's needed in the gateway application really, really helpful. We've right. already submitted our application, so there might be an element of having to supply more information but I just wondered if it's possible this isn't my question by the way but is it possible for you to for you guys to maybe create like a downloadable guide that can go on the website so when people are thinking about making that application as an employer rep we know clearly what's required of us in that application form because it's a bit light on information at the minute yeah we are um, it's, a, it's it's a really good point uh, sorry Ari, I cut across you carry on no, that was it. It was just because I know I think we might be asked to give a little bit more information because there's only a certain amount of characters in the application form. And we had over like close to 100 placements. So we didn't give the level of detail on each and every one of those placements that might be required. So because we couldn't, yeah. there's not enough characters there. Um, let, let, me, yeah, let, let me let me reassure guidance. let me reassure and i should have said Ari, absolutely the guidance the, the the guidance that is there is being iterated and it will change to be honest we are we are i'll be really candid with colleagues on the call we, we don't want to put 
absolute chapter and verse out there because to be candid we don't want to see just copy and paste if that makes sense but nonetheless I do think that the guidance that's out, that's out there at the minute could be beefed up a little bit. In part, one of the reasons why we are embedding, um, well, we're calling them kickstart um, uh, single point of contact in our districts is so that if employers or gateways are thinking, we're not really sure what to put in this form, because let's be honest, you know, everyone's very busy. They're under a lot of pressure. No one really has got, you know, professional bid writing teams out there unless you're multi-million pound businesses. We want to help as much as we can with that. So my absolute, I, I'll give a, a perhaps a hint and then a reassurance if I can, Eric and Elizabeth and colleagues. Um, if, if you are feeling a bit blind about what to put on, if that makes sense, then reach out to your local Job Centre Plus or equally for colleagues on this call, I am more than happy to spend some time with you individually. If people actually want to, you know, nick 30 minutes or an hour out of my diary, very happy to do that, to talk about what a good application could look like, because I think it's important we work together on it. But the reassurance that I would give you is that unless the application is incredibly poor, if that makes sense, and we have had some literal ones liners if I'm being blunt um, unless the application is particularly poor we won't just reject it out of hand so at the moment Eric what we're seeing and other colleagues is the what we're seeing from gateway applicants is a very very broad church of application quality so some are putting in a lot of detail what the roles are what the organizations are all of these sorts of things and for others we're getting phraseology like various entry level roles in the businesses that we are representing in in situations like that we would come back to you Eric, and we would say can we have a bit more information, please? Because we recognise that a lot of people are waiting and we don't want people waiting. So it seems much better to us that we should pick up the phone and have a conversation, because if we just reject what would otherwise be a very good application, then it put, it basically it wastes everyone's time and it turns people off the Kickstart scheme. So absolutely. Oh, well, that's, good. that's good. Now, my actual question. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> was was um it was the recruitment piece. So I we're represented a representation representative organisation for film, TV, and music businesses. And one of the concerns that we've had is around that recruitment piece and the work coaches being able to identify the kind of the right individuals and for us being able to make sure that enough people hear about these vacancies because there's so many young people in the industry who've been displaced. So I just, I, I guess what I was trying to find out is a little bit more about that. So when I as a gateway organization hand over these job descriptions, who am I handing them over to? Is it like one JCP kind of representative or is it a multitude across boroughs that we're working in? And what kind of relationship because we're being asked to support that recruitment um, yep. process can that can an employer rep because we do recruitment anyway sorry I should have said that can an employer rep be able to assist employers in that way if they if it's going to be beneficial for the young person and the um the the employer so all right I'll, I'll answer your question directly so when um when when you get approved as a gateway organization or indeed as an employer it doesn't really matter which then with the grant agreement we ask the organization to return what we call the vacancy template and the vacancy template right. has more detail about the positions um uh, it might vary between employer or gateway i'm not sure it doesn't really matter but the vacancy template has got the um vacancies on them and you tell us the locations and then once we process those we will load them into the provision service and it will only be available in the locations that have been specified if that makes sense so the work coach it's not like for argument's sake a work coach in cornwall would have access to vacancies that are available in scotland or anything along those particular lines so we would we gather those and then they're made available to work coaches um and then the work coach will make the referral to the gateway or the employer right and that's up to five cvs that you would get per, per vacancy yeah i mean we've, we've we've set the five because we think that's probably that we think that's we feel that's probably about right if that makes sense so it does allow then that employer to hopefully have a really good assessment process for um uh, the jobs that they want um it could be less than five i think again it depends on the jobs it depends on the local labor market um but it, we wouldn't normally want to refer more than five right okay i mean i have more questions but i'm conscious of i don't want to hug the dance I mean, we've got, I'll take I'm, you up 
I mean, Eli um, Elizabeth, how, have, we, have, have we got me until 12.30? Yeah, we've got um, the Greater Manchester Combined Authority speakers talking about their gateway. So if we say we've got you until, I don't know, 10 past 12, yeah, so, that's fine. Uh, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy to answer more questions, Ari, either from you or others. Elizabeth, I'm in your hands. Then I have do, you, one more. do you want to keep Excuse going, Ari? Yeah. I only have my last one, which has to be an email. You, you refer to the TNCs that, you know, that there's going to be some terms and conditions. Can can we see those in advance? Is that yeah, possible? they're on the, um, Ari, they're already on the website. So oh, if you, brilliant. Oh, sorry, on, on the website, I beg your pardon. If you, go to, if you go to gov.uk forward slash kickstart, kickstart kickstart sorry um all the t's and c's are on there if i'm right the grant agreements are also on there i, I know oh, really? that i'm sure the employer one is i think the gateway one is so that just gives you an opportunity to have a look at all of this stuff in advance but again ari i will again make the offer that you know we've stood this up at such pace i know there is still noise in the system either you or colleagues if you want to steal some time in my diary just to talk about things then then please do yeah. Jen. I'm Please. like emailing you now. Thank you so exactly. much. Mary. I really appreciate your time. I would, I would say, Elizabeth, ent enterprising colleagues. I've already yeah. think I think I've had about nine emails from people. <laughs> I'm not, so from, for, for those of you that have contacted me, everyone, and it's been a it's been a number chasing, you know, we've had the application in, where is it, please? That's already with my team and they will be on that now and they will provide updates to you direct for colleagues. So I hope that's I hope that works. That's, that's excellent. Thank you. Um, the next name I see is Vanda, Vanda de Freitas. Do you want to come in, please? Hi. <laughs> yeah. I've got a sausage dog on my knee, so I'm just hoping she doesn't bark through the questions. <laughs> I've, I've Hi. Got I've got loads of questions. <laughs> and I, I did put some in the comments, so hopefully. Um, do you want me to give you all the questions or do them one by one? Uh, I do them one by one. Let's keep, okay. let's keep, it, a, let's keep it a surprise. OK, so we, we want to be a gateway. We've already yep. started that process. Can we put our own jobs through the gateway is the first question. No. Uh, so you can. Uh, sorry, that's a little bit. Sorry, I beg your pardon. You can be both a gateway and an employer, if that makes sense. Yep. But you cannot apply for both as one. Does that make sense? So we do have to make two separate submissions. You, you, you would have to make an employer application and a gateway application. OK, fabulous. Um, the £1,500, we, we want to um, top slice some of that to create a support team for your people. When we did Future Jobs Fund, we did the same thing. We're assuming we'll agree that with employers and we'll do all the employ employability support using some of that funding. Is that OK? Uh, it's for you to discuss that with the employer, quite frankly. So I, I, I won't go back into the into into the into the chalk and talk session I was doing before. But in essence, the way that this works is that when we have uh, we have direct relationships with employers who apply for more than thirty, less than thirty places. DWP's relationship is with you as the gateway. We funnel everything through you as the gateway, and it's then for you as the gateway to have a conversation with the organisations that you're representing about what that looks like. I think it's just worth also saying and i would have said this in my slot but i think we'll just go through the questions now won't we elizabeth um that in addition to us giving you the 1500 pounds to have the conversation with the employer the gateway organization also gets an additional 300 and that is specifically for the gateway organization to reflect the administrative costs that you are going through so we don't expect that to be passed on to the employer unless you particularly want to i guess vanda um but uh, <laughs> um the 1500 is a conversation between you and the employer and we see really mixed models to be honest so we see some of the gateway organizations that i think see themselves very much as offering a lot of the wraparound support for the smaller organizations and similarly we see other models whereby the gateway i think is acting as a conduit and not much else and i'm not saying one model is better than another but clearly if you're just acting as a conduit that's a bit different to providing wraparound support, coaching, mentoring, whatever that looks like, which I think would probably then define the conversation about the money. OK, that's brilliant. So you mentioned that um, once you've been notified a young person has started, then you yeah. issue £1,500 to the gateway and then you check HMRC data to then start paying monthly in arrears. I know that question. Sometimes. Do you pay that monthly to the gateway and then we pass it on? Yes. And then a question around that then, um, 
because you're doing that HMRC check, do we need to get payslip evidence before we pass the money on or do we just take it that you're satisfied and you've paid us the money? No, once we've paid you, we've paid you. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just going to run through them really quick. Go for it. Um, there's a, been a question about um, that one of your spotlight checks is that companies will need to have been trading for either one or two years. I think some people are saying two. Is that is that accurate? Uh, you need to have filed. You need to have filed accounts for two and, years. Well, well, I mean, I used to work at company sales, so I should know the answer. But <laughs> um, uh, but you, but but filing deadlines, I think, can be up to two two years for a new company. I think. But the key thing is, it needs to. You, you need to have filed that set of accounts so we can see them. Okay, and then just as an example, if we say we submitted tomorrow, we're probably ready to submit. And obviously, we're trying to manage expectations of employees. We've got some employees who are looking at jobs to start in January. Realistically, when might we be? I know you've got a backlog of gateway applications. When realistically will we will we know whether it's been successful? And it's just trying to to manage some. I know there's been some delays, and I've seen in the comments that you've got employees having to having to shift jobs back because they've not been notified. So. Sort of roughly now, what's the time frame you think okay. you were? So it's a it's a really good question, Vanda. And as you say, I've seen it pop up in the sidebar. So let, uh, it's a game of two halves, if I'm being honest. So if you are an employer uh, applicant, then to be honest, you shouldn't really be waiting any time at all to be blunt. And by any time, I mean any appreciable time. We have literally a drip of applications that are um, uh, uh, old. To be honest with you. Um, if you are a gateway organisation, we do have more of those that are older, and that's reflective, to be honest, of the amount of work it takes for us to process a gateway application. Because in essence, an employer application is one application, but a gateway application can be you plus 30 employers, it can be you plus 40, to, uh, 30, sorry, it can be you plus 10, you know, 15, and we have to go through that assessment process. It's in essence like, you know, processing, I don't know, you know, 25 or so employer applications. Our time scale that is out there is that we aim to get um, applications processed within four weeks. We are there or thereabouts with employers, to be honest. We are not there um, uh, with gateway organisations. However, there should be no one on the call. And if there is, you need to get in touch, please. And that number of you have. There should be no one on the call that is waiting for more than four weeks who has not heard from DWP. So if you are waiting for more than four weeks, it should be because, Vanda, we've come back to you and said, we can't see additionality in these jobs. What does this look like? Can you give us some more information? So the concern that I have is if people are waiting in radio silence mode, if that makes sense, because that's just not good. But I think we do have to accept that with the gateway application, the way that it works is we get the application, it's picked up almost immediately, to be honest, and it will start to run through that process. The first check is Spotlight, if that makes sense. If the organisation runs through Spotlight, then we move on to the other checks. But um, the last, but what we then do is you then as the gateway organisation have a, an automatic two week time to come back to us on. So if you think about it, that automatic and people are using that, right? Because if you're a gateway and you've got to then get in touch with I don't know, 15 or 16 um uh, employers that takes you time as well and so that automatically means that a gateway application unless it goes straight through will take a minimum of two and a half weeks but our published aim is we want to get there within four weeks but if you are applying now then you know we are now pivoting more resource out of the employer team into the gateway team because we are now more or less up to date with the employer applications so i would hope that we would be able to get to you within the published time scale but if we're not it should be an indicator that it's because we're in dialogue with you as the gateway about your application so a lot of it vanda i think depends on I wouldn't say the quality, but it certainly depends on the level of detail that you can put in the application for us, because if it's one that we can look at and my approvals board will look at it and say, actually, yeah, that's fine. We can see what Vanda said. We can see the employers. Bang. It goes straight through. I think, I think one of the issues that's come up in the chat is about if we've got 40 employers, how do we how do we convince you of the conditionality, uh, additionality rather for, for each of those employers? Because we wouldn't want to make a blanket statement. So I think and I think people were saying that, you know, there's a word count. And I think that would be quite difficult for us to 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 make you sure oh, that they are so additional I, jobs. I can I can help you with I can help you with that. Absolutely. Let's because, again, all good questions. I'm sure other people would have asked them if you didn't, Vanda. Um, so a couple of things. So 
part of it depends on volume, to be honest, as, as you said. So if you are if you're a gateway organization representing, I don't know, six or seven employers, then the very best applications will list the vacancies and will say they are additional because, if that makes sense, in the same way as an employer application would. If you do not have the space to do that, then it is literally as much detail as you can give us. And what we've also seen, which I think is is good due diligence, if I might suggest this, because DWP will knock on the door of the gateway if something goes wrong rather than the employer, is we where that's not been possible because the you know the gateway is representing 25, 30 organizations with hundreds of jobs and you just can't get it on the form, and we accept that. Then what we've seen some gateways do is we've seen the gateways um, uh, in essence, and these are statements, I, I do accept that, but we've seen the gateway saying to us in the application form, we have personally conducted our own due diligence. We have, for argument's sake, got signed agreements back from the employers that we are representing that these are additional. We're comfortable that they're additional. Um, that can also work, to be honest, but I'll just, I think, loop back, if I might, Vander, on the point that I made to Arit, which is that if we feel that you are nearly there, if that makes sense, and literally it's because the form has timed you out, we will not reject your application, we will speak to you. Um, that's not to say that no gateway will get a, a, a reject, because as I said, where people, quite frankly, have just put various roles, well, we probably will reject that because it's exceptionally weak, to be honest. But where we can see that a real genuine attempt has been made, DWP just won't then just kick it back at you and say, you know, go away type thing. We've done that. So we've literally replicated the submission form with our employers. So we will have all that background information. So that's really helpful. Um, I think I've just got one more. Was So um, would, will we need to enter into some sort of formal agreement with our employers as a gateway? So we know that we enter into one with you. Is there an expectation that we will pass back down the chain and have some sort of formal agreement with those employers? You're going to have to ask me the question again, Vanda, because I'm getting lots of pings on the chat and I'm yeah. not an expert in Teams and I don't know how to shut it up. I'm not being disrespectful. I, don't, I, actually don't think um, I, I didn't hear you. Can you ask yeah, me again? Sorry. So the question was, so we, we as a gateway will enter into some sort of formal agreement with you. You will give us a grant offer letter, which we will sign. Is there an expectation that we will also enter into a formal agreement with our with our host employers as a gateway? So I don't know. The, I'll be candid and say I don't know the answer to that question, but I would suggest it would be sensible. And the reason I would say that is because, um, as I said, our relationship is with you as the gateway. And therefore, if something is going wrong, we will not speak to your employers. We will speak to you, to be honest. And so you, I think, as a gateway, would want that added assurance that if something was going wrong, that you had something signed with your employers. And I actually think, you know, the very best gateways we've seen have, have kind of, I don't think employers would have a problem with that, if that makes sense. And I think we might be more concerned if, if, if I can't hear you at the moment, Kat, but I'm happy to take the question if we can get, get you on. OK, shall we move on and see what happens? And then perhaps you and you and Kat could speak separately to this and um, the next name i see is tony nags let's hope we can get tony on yeah well uh, good morning hi, yeah. you? hi elizabeth hi nick how are you doing you're right hi tony great to hear you you're right yeah not too bad for uh, it's wednesday yes <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i feel yeah. that as well i feel your pain yeah yeah, uh, yeah nick i really appreciate it for all of this there's a lot of stuff coming out which is very useful there's also a lot of questions being asked uh, i've got just three or four hopefully that you can answer quite quickly if that's all right with you and the main one, which is we've, we've put three applications in. I think some of this would have been really helpful, and I appreciate it's an ongoing beast, uh, three or four weeks ago in terms of supporting applications. And my only concern is that applications that are coming through, if they don't get passed, there's another three or four weeks delay in terms of getting applications put back through with different levels of additionality and different different um, comments in. But I'll, I'll come to that in a second, if that's all right with you. Yeah. Um in, in terms of, I've, I've heard I've heard comments back or about this this one to three ratio of staff to new kickstart people. Can you? Uh, this has only come from conversations with DWP staff. Can you give me some understanding of what what that what what that is and if if that's actually in place? I can actually. It's a really good question, Tony. Thank you. Um, so it used to be, yeah. It, it's it's not it's not perhaps a that straightforward a question to answer, but <clears throat> it used to be the case that we would fail an applicant if 
um, the ratio, I need to get this the right way around. I didn't do very well in GCSE maths, if I'm being honest, but the ratio between the number of placements that uh, an employer, let's stick with employers, that an employer wanted to offer had to be three to one. So in essence, what that meant is that if you were employer, an employer and you wanted 30 kickstart placements, you needed to have an organization that was a minimum size of 90, if you, if that, if you see what I mean. So the three to one ratio. Now, that was initially regarded as a straight fail. Um, and I know that won't help um, uh, colleagues on the call who might have um, applied and potentially been knocked out on that basis. But we do now take a different approach to that. And I think, again, it's just reflective, Elizabeth and colleagues, on how quickly we stood the scheme up and the fact that we, we simply couldn't get a perfect process in place um, from the off. So now where where an applicant can't demonstrate the three to one, we look at all of those applications at my decision board because there are some situations where actually we wouldn't say that that's a knockout, mainly because, you know, we know the world of business works in lots of different ways. So good example would be we saw one through the approvals board um, last week where it was nearly there, if you see what I mean. So it was 30 placements and the organisation had 52 employees and they said that they used outsourced HR support. And on that basis, the application went through, if that makes sense, because the core for us is that three to one is perhaps a bit. Well, I will describe it as, I guess, a blunt tool of saying, right, well, um, you know, is the organisation big enough to support that young person in their work placement in the employability space? Now, I think it's more than that. And that's why we're taking a slightly different approach. The other way that we're looking at doing it is that we um, are looking at um, potentially having conversations with employers who are looking to fall down on that one, where we might say, well, actually, you want 30, we're happy to give you 30, but how about we do it in, in three tranches? So we do 10 in December, 10 January, 10, 10 March or whatever. And, and, and in that situation, it would go across. So I think what I'm saying, Tony, is it's not an auto fail, but the only thing I would say, and I guess it's similar to the conversation that I was having with Vanda, um, is that if, for argument's sake, an organisation comes to us and they have got two or three employees and they want 400 kickstart placements, the chances are, unless the bid was absolutely cracking in all other aspects, it would be a fail. But where it's um, where we can genuinely see that it's nearly there and we just need to do a bit of work, that is no longer a fail, that is a conversation. Does that help? It, it, it helps now, but it would have been... Um, helpful uh, having it a few weeks ago. Yes, when, no, I do know. I do uh, know. That, that, that's, thank you for that, Nick, so far. Just a couple more questions, if that's all right with you. Yeah, please. Um, you mentioned about this two-year training about companies having to have companies filed at a company's house, accounts filed at a company's house. Yeah. We've got, we're a gateway, and we've, we've got three applications through. We've got approximately 35 employers across the three applications. Um, I'm not fully aware. I wasn't aware that they all had to have filed accounts at company's house before we put them forward as employers. So my concern now is that our application or one of the applications might fail because one or two of the employers we've put forward haven't filed their accounts. So I can help you with that one as well, Tony. Um, right. uh, so your application will not fail, if that makes sense. Right. So we see that quite regularly, if I'm being really candid, and it's not right. just on the it's not just on the on the on the on the on the uh, what's the one looking for age of the company perhaps better thing it can be on other areas as well because spotlight looks at financial viability as well but in that in that scenario tony we would not fail you as a gateway organization because that's not your responsibility if that makes sense right. but we would fail well fail is quite a strong word isn't it but we would we we, we wouldn't agree those organizations that fell within that bracket that were beneath you and in addition to that, we wouldn't. Um, so as long as you're passing, Tony, we sounds a bit weird. As long as you're passing as a gateway, then yeah. if employers that you're representing are failing, we won't kick you out. The only time we would want to have a conversation with you, and it still wouldn't be an auto fail, but we did see one go through a couple of days ago where it was already relatively low, as in um, literally 32 or 33 via the gateway. And yeah. that was made up of only a few number of employers and literally 70 percent of the employers failed and that, that left the gateway with two or three positions now yeah. in that in that situation we wouldn't fail you because that's not fair but we would phone you and say look this isn't this hasn't quite worked what do you want to do if that makes sense so okay. have you got other employees that you want to add so um 
There's a fallback oh, mechanism, helpful. basically. You've got a fallback mechanism for sort yes. of maybes. Okay. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Nick. Just a quick one on this. And I've been asked by a few employers, um, if placements through no fault of their own have to leave the placement within six months, they might have a family issue, they might be moving. There's a real reason why they've got to leave the placement. What happens to the £1,500? And this is where the employers have come back and said, well, if I've been given £1,500 for, to look after somebody for six months when, on a placement for a business I want, and they've got to leave, what am I expected? Are they expected to give the money back or what's the situation? It's a, it's a, it's a very fair question, Tony. And I, I'll answer it, I think, in, in two ways, if I might. So in, in, the, in the general round of it, and I do mean in the general round of it, the answer is no. The £1,500 is given to the employer or the gateway to assist with the onboarding and the employer Ability yep. support. There is no intention that DWP would claw that back. Yep. So if, for argument's sake, Tony, someone leaves after four months, for argument's yep. sake, then there is would not be a situation, I, I can guarantee it, where DWP would come to that employer and say, I think we'll have our £1,500 back, please. That's yep. not happening. However, what I will say is we have to have mechanisms in place, and, and I'm sure everyone on the call as responsible colleagues would yeah. appreciate this. We so have to have mechanisms in place yeah. where if we see something happening que as questionable, yeah, that agree we with might that. have that conversation. So yeah. I can see someone just popped up in what if they leave after a few days. That would be a conversation, I think, but in, in, in the main, if there's yeah. a genuine reason why after three or four days, it hasn't worked out, then yeah. we would not want to claw that back. Clearly, if we see a repeated position of whereby course. young people are cycling in and out, then given the £1,500 is not an insignificant amount of money, then we would want to have that conversation. Yeah, and, uh, we were the same with that, Nick. We, we, it was more a question of an employer being concerned, because life's life, uh, yeah. you know, and things do happen, rather than a churn, which I think is exactly where we come from, and exactly where you come from as, as, as a DWP. Um, one, one last one, if that's all right with you. Um, no. As I understand it, the wages are being paid to the gateways to then pass on to the employers that they're representing. They are. Cash flow. Oh, sorry. I, I missed you, Tony. You, dro you dropped out. Yeah, if, the, if the wages for the placement are being paid to the gateway organisations to then give to the employers. Yeah. Uh, what's the situation? You're talking cash flow here because my understanding is it's about six weeks before um, the salaries come through. So it's at least a month in arrears. It, now, is a month. it is a month. Yeah, I think it may be a little bit more than a month in arrears. Initially, okay. initially, the the um, initially the proposal was we would we would pay less frequently. But I think we yeah. certainly recognise that that just wouldn't yeah. work with the business. But yeah. the problem is if, if we're tying it in with the HMRC feeds, yeah. And we have to, because otherwise that's our only real mechanism of proving that the young person's on payroll. There isn't really another way. We can't really pay any more frequently. No, I, I think it's just a problem, Tony, but yeah. I think we can do any more with it. So, sorry to interrupt now. I do apologise. Yeah. My issue is, as a gateway, you're talking cash flow here. If yeah. I've got 30 jobs at, at an average of £800 a month, I'm expected to pay out £24,000 up front before I actually get anywhere. Is that correct? Uh it, that it's a good question. I think that depends on the relationship that you have with the employer, to be honest, Tony. So we pay you in arrears, if that makes sense. How you then how you then fund that via the employer is between you and the employer to arrange. Right. That's that's what I was trying to get to. Oh, sorry, Tony. Sorry. My expectations were that I'm telling employers they're getting paid a month in arrears because I knew that. I didn't know whether the money was going directly to them or to the gateway. Right. So I was just checking that we're not in a situation where we have to pay up front. No. Uh, if we've got a relationship, that's fine. Thank you very much. Um, and I think yeah, I'll, I'll I'll let other people get on with theirs. Odd bits and pieces, Nick, but really appreciate it for your help on, on answering Thank some you. of them. Uh, it's Great. answered a few bits. Thank you. Let's keep going, Elizabeth. Yeah, next name I see is Andrew. I don't know who Andrew is. It says Andrew Guest. But, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. hoping that's that's me. Uh, it's yeah, Andrew go for it. Hi, it's Andrew Waite here uh, from Impactful Governance Community mm -hmm. Interest Company. I, think you I have me, Andrew, haven't you? I, I, yes, <laughs> you're on the ball. Thank you for that. Um, so I've emailed you twice, in fact, once earlier this morning, and then since we've had some conversations, okay. I've sent you a follow up. So uh, apologies for overloading your inbox there. Doesn't matter. Couldn't get any follow up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the uh, the points are really that we've been waiting more than eight weeks, and we have actually had a series of radio silences. So I guess that's the first point to make. Are you um, a gateway? Sorry. Yes, we're a 
gateway, yes. We submitted our first batch of 30 back in September, and we were one of the earlier submitters. Um, so we were really keen to get things rolling. So it may have appeared that we gave some sketchy information in the early stages because we had no guidance about what you wanted. But what we did do was our own uh, background research, and we looked into companies individually. Uh, we looked at uh, writing a eight-page written agreement with the organizations, which they then consequently signed. So we've actually got everything that we need to get going. And um, so I guess for us, it's felt really awkward because we've had to then say to these employers sort of week after week and giving them a weekly update. And um, even though we're chasing regionally with DWP Job Center Plus, um, we've had no information and it just keeps coming back saying these things will be dealt with and there is a pipeline and you'll be dealt with when we get round to you. So that's been extremely frustrating. Um, you know, we've had all the additionality and we've had all the employability, including we've structured our training programs and appointed two trainers who are ready to start. Um, so, you know, I guess really uh, that open dialogue would have been really helpful for your team to come back to us and say, you know, what else have you got? Because we've got tons of stuff. So we submitted our other batch of 30 in October. So we're currently standing at 61 vacancies. And so we're having to go back to all of those employers and saying, I'm sorry, we don't know any more just yet. We'll let you know as soon as we know. So that's why I was really keen to see you on today. And thank you so much for giving me your email. <laughs> so no, you cool. probably not at all. So we will get the we last will. of no, it's fine. I mean, we will definitely get, um, I've given it to the team um, for, and a number of colleagues I can see. Have, I mean, I'm very happy to do that. You know, we will we will get you updates. Um, you shouldn't have been waiting that long with total radio silence. We should be in dialogue. That said, with the number of applications that we've got, it's, I think, possible that we see um, uh, that, that there is the odd one or two that, that we just haven't managed to speak to. But I'm very happy, Andrew, to, you know, we, we, we'll get that done. And a member of my team is on it at the moment. Great. And my, my final question, really, after kind of setting the scene there, is that uh, we talked about UTRs, unique, unique tax references for sole traders, because so far we're only talking about companies and charities with registered numbers. Uh, but we haven't catered for people who are sole trading companies who are equally viable employers. Um, so I guess that's my other question is, well, when are we going to get round to dealing with sole traders as employers as well? Uh, yeah, no, it's a really good question. I don't have an answer to it, Andrew, but it's let's put it like this. At the moment, we are looking at two things in DWP. So we're looking at Spotlight as a tool to be candid with you. So are we comfortable that it's giving us the best value, if that makes sense? Is it knocking out organizations that actually would be very good partners for DWP and we need to look at doing things in a slightly different way. And then the second thing that we're looking at is is exactly that, Andrew. So what can we do to broaden, um, I guess, the mix of um, uh, uh, employers that can come in because we are you know acutely aware that if you are a sole trader spotlight will knock you out and so we're looking at our options for that I know it sounds like a dreadfully you know public sector thing to say but we you know we, we that's not something that we can deliver overnight to be honest but we it is absolutely on our list is, is all I can say I'm afraid. Right, no that's very good thank you I appreciate your time today and uh, I certainly will be feeding back to the employers that we've got who are still waiting to let them know that it's underway now so yeah we that up, please, and, and have a conversation by telephone. That would be ideal. Yeah, brilliant. No problem. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth. Okay, Julie Duncan, please. Hi, Nick. Hi, Julie. How are you? Uh, hi, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, thanks for your input. It has been really useful. You've answered quite a lot of my questions that I had anyway. Um, I'm from Durham County Council. We've got a gateway application in at the moment um, under the name of Durham Works and we have had the spotlight form back. So thank you for that. Um, and we're ongoing with that at the moment. Um, I just wanted to go back to a question that Vanda asked earlier about um, applying as a as a gateway if you're actually creating your own vacancies as well. Yeah. Um, so I know that you actually answered Vanda and said you can't do both, but you could make two applications, one as an employer and one as a gateway. Yeah. Um, what if you didn't have the 30 vacancies as an employer? <laughs> <laughs> good, good question. <laughs> um, uh, if you didn't have the 30 vacancies as an employer, it would, be, it would be, that is a great question, so I'll just put it in the sidebar, then logically... I think you would have to go through a gateway, which sounds bizarre, but you could not, you could not, you, you could not be your own gateway. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, it does now. Um, right. Okay. I mean, we have put four 
vacancies for Durham County Council on our initial application and we're in the process of looking throughout the whole organisation so now I can treat that differently which is great so I guess we'll probably have those discussions about those four that we've put in there in yeah. our initial application separately um, so yes that's really useful um, thank you. Um, another quick question is that um, we've had um, a couple of employers approach us who've been rejected, wanting yeah. to use us as a gateway, yeah. but they don't know why they've been rejected. So obviously that makes it difficult for us to know whether we, you know, what what, what the reasons were. It could, I, I mean, one of them I need to speak to, it could be that they've applied and they didn't have 30 vacancies, although the guidance is quite clear. But if it's for other reasons, um, how would we take that forward? So um, uh, the way that you can take it forward and, and Elizabeth, I uh, just can I just wheel back on something if I might just I will just go, to Julie, because you asked me that question and Vanda, you asked it as well. Let me just go back and just check on this position about whether you can be your own gateway. I don't think you can. I do want to just go back and just check on that because I don't want to be providing you with the wrong information. So let let I will just take it away because there's something nagging in my brain that worries me about that. But um, uh, um, so Julie, yes, to, to to answer your question more clearly, the one I am pretty sure of the answer. So um, districts. Um, yeah, Job Centre Plus contacts in districts have the reasons why individual bids failed. So, Julie, if you want to get in touch with your local, well, ideally, yeah, if you get in touch with your local JCP or equally, if you go on uh, gov.uk kickstart, kickstart, then you will see a list of um, uh, uh, contact points for geographical parts of the country and those contact points will ultimately route in to someone in a district who will be able to say to you employer A or employer B um, they failed because and we'll be able to tell you whether it was a spotlight fail in which case uh, you can't at the moment progress them or you could but you would probably just get another spotlight fail or whether they failed because it was an employability issue or an additionality issue so you can get that information uh, appreciate this not in the reject letter but you can get that via those contact points Julie. Thank you that's really useful just one very quick last question um, where a large employer really should be employing applying in their own right so for example a national employer who may have vacancies spread throughout the country um, we have been approached by a, a, such an employer um, and I'm not sure whether they should be making um, a an application in their own right rather than using a number of different gateways ask me the question again sorry julie you dropped out a tiny bit i didn't get it yeah sorry um a national employer approached us to be um their gateway yeah um but my understanding is that they have vacancies across the country um so they would be approaching individual gateways is that okay or should they be making um an application in their own right it's, as a large employer it it uh, it's it mm, it well I don't know the employer so so please don't take what I'm going to say next as a as a as in any way sort of a you know a, a comment on that employer. I mean we we tend to see we tend to see big employers approach us directly because they can if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and in many ways it's neat if we're being absolutely candid. Um, but um, there's nothing technically to stop a larger employer going through a gateway I guess if they wanted to. Um, I don't think, sorry, I'm just, it's a, it's a really great question. I don't think it's mandatory that if you have more than 30 vacancies that you have to come to us direct. It is mandatory that if you have less than 30, you must go through a gateway. But I don't think the opposite applies. I, I think it's slightly, yeah, it's 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 an interesting one. I, I might ask the question, Julie, but I don't think there's anything that prevents it. Okay, thank you. I'll let someone else have a try, a turn next now. Um, I am aware, Nick, that some of these issues have come up before and um, one of our colleagues, Tracy Fishwick, and I have been involved in some conversations about this. Tracy's just raised a hand. Can I just bring Tracy yeah. back in? Yeah. Cool. Tracy. Oh, th <clears throat> thanks, Elizabeth. Um, just on the can you be a gateway and can you be an employer on the same application, the advice that we've been given before is that you can, you just won't get the £300 um so you could you could be an employer with five jobs let's say and you've brought in another 30 or more jobs you'd get the 300 and the 1500 when you're acting as the gateway 
but you'd get the 1500 when you're just the employer. Therefore, you could put them on one. Otherwise, you've got employers who want to get who are gateways having to find another agency, and it, and that that was that has previously been said. The the other one I wanted to just ask was about the ratio three to one. Yeah. Um, we've got quite a few employers where they employ up to three people currently they're very good businesses they are the micro businesses they're trading well through covid they're in digital and tech and creative and i'm worried now that you've just told me that they can't hire one or two kickstart people because we don't apply apply the ratio check to subsidiary organizations of a gateway does that make sense no so 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 I don't believe so if you're a gateway organization and you are uh, um, uh, uh, representing a number of employees, I don't believe that we apply the ratio check to the employers that you represent because there is an intention that you as the gateway will, would provide some of that wraparound advice. Does that help? Ah, right. So they can be the micros if they're in the gate in with the gateway. Uh, yes, I think that's right. And I think, Elizabeth, just on the point that Tracy made, do let me go away and check that point about whether yeah, you can be your own gateway, whether you know whether you can have an employer application or a gateway. The reason, Tracy, I'm not convinced about the employer gateway type thing on the one application is when they come to our decision board, we never see, I've never seen a combined employer uh, gateway application. Does that make sense? Now, it could be. And if that's the case, Elizabeth, it's my knowledge gap. I'd apologize for that. But let me just go away and check that point. But just to answer your second point, Tracy, if those that you are representing have got less, th- uh, uh, don't don't mean that, uh, don't make that ratio. I don't believe we check that out. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, the next name I see is uh, Lisa Bristow. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Um, this is really, really helpful, uh, Nick. Thank you so much. I've just got a couple of quick questions. Uh, on the universal credit, We've heard that it can be from day one. We've also heard that it has to be six months if they're at long term unemployment. Are you able to clarify? Um, ask me ask me again. Sorry, Lisa, it's my, I can, my, it keeps pinging off on my side. Okay. So if they've got to be claiming universal credit, can that be from day one or do they have to be at long term risk of unemployment being six months? Uh, they can be from day one. It can be from day one. That's yeah. perfect. Um, uh, one of the other questions, moving on from uh, Eric's question about can employers advertise their own vacancies? I think we know that they can't advertise their own vacancies. They've got to go through the Job Centre Plus. But mm-hmm. one of the employers I spoke to yesterday said, well, once it's been approved and once the job has been advertised in the Job, job Centre, can he put it on social media to try to engage people to go to the job center to apply for it yeah 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 that's 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 fine that's not that's not a problem i think the only thing i would say it's just a bit of a caveat lisa is i I haven't got a problem with that i think it comes down to tracy's point earlier about empowering the young person and all of that sort of stuff but just i guess a caveat which is that um employers just need to be a little bit careful because um if an employer takes someone direct Mm. even though the vacancy might be advertised by jcp the monies aren't payable so that's the only i would just we need to take care with that um and i could perhaps see that happening but in general if if all that's happening is an employer is saying we're a kickstart employer we've got you know i don't know 10 jobs over here or 15 there if you're on uc you know why not go and have a conversation with your work coach no problem with that at all but they couldn't advertise it on something like indeed with that caveat you must go to the job center but this job is available because i think that's what a lot of us are worried about is that they're not going to get the reach if it's not out there in the arena i'm not gonna <laughs> I'll be careful i'm not gonna i'm not gonna make the same mistake about the getting confused about gateways and employers i'm gonna go and check it lisa i'm not sure i know the answer to that question if it's i'm come if, if an employer is putting on their twitter feed we've got yeah. some jobs advertised at jcp go along and talk i think that's a bit different to putting them on a website if that makes sense mm-hmm. as in an employment website so i'm going to need to go and check I agree. I mean, that that's the advice that I gave. I think it's OK on your social media yeah. to just be interested, but not uh, directly advertise it. A um, couple of other questions um, going on from one of the other questions again about um, if somebody leaves after a couple of months. 
obviously it's our job as a gateway to try and engage that person to stay as long as possible but if in the instance it doesn't work out and they leave for whatever reason how do we get somebody else into that place do we have to go back to the drawing board and apply for the role again can we just go back to the jcp and get some someone else in how does that work um good question um we don't have a developed process for that yet to be honest lisa um i think it's one of the it's one of the known unknowns if that makes sense so it's a it's a it's a path that we're aware of but i don't think we have the answer what i will say is that we would not want you to have to reapply because that wastes your time and our time to be honest so for argue so just to give you an just to give you an idea we've got the um uh, with gateways now we know that we've got the potential for gateways to want to add people and employers to their grant to their grant agreement we we will now have a process whereby we vary the grant agreement and hopefully we'll have a different process for that rather than everyone needs to apply again and wait if that makes sense because you've already been approved and certain to a certain degree we should be able to find you a slightly different path through and I think we would be in the same place Lisa with the um, uh, the situation you've talked about the um, the slight challenge we've got is that once the person is with you the vacancy is closed on our system if that makes sense and, and and to be honest given we're working with minimum viable product I don't think we've got the option of going back into the build and saying let's give let's let's put it back up for Lisa if that makes sense mm -hmm. so yeah yeah, I, I, we don't want you to have to do that, but I'd be lying if I said we had an absolute nail down process for you not to have to. Yeah. OK, um, and just one final comment, really, um, same as somebody else just mentioned about that they've been waiting a number of weeks. We um, applied on on the um, invitation to tender. We are listed on the national as a national gateway, but I've had no confirmation that we are definitely past due diligence. So we've put in five bids so far, haven't heard anything. Apart from, we've had a couple of spotlight tools back, so we know that it's being processed, but the earliest ones are now seven weeks old. I'm worried then what happens if we don't pass due deal, or if we are listed on the government site, does that mean we've passed? So we had two, this does predate me in the job, I will just say this, but we had two, um, we had two processes initially. We had the EOI process where people would come to us and they would have a kind of stripped down check, if that makes sense, which enabled them to go on to gov.uk. And then we had the, <coughs> excuse me, then we had the full application process. So Lisa, have you put in a full application as a gateway? No, I don't think so. We did an invitation to tender and then, and then we, arrived on the gateway so because i'm quite high up on the list i'm getting a lot of calls i've put five bids in so far and i'm just everything's on fingers crossed so i'm going to suggest lisa that you should if you don't mind if it's not putting you to too much trouble can you drop me an email please I have already. And, <laughs> fair enough. all right then and we'll 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 have a look at that for you to be honest um it sounds a bit odd to be blunt not you don't sound a bit odd that the situation sounds a bit odd um let me let let's let us have a look at it for you lisa if that's okay please if you would that'd be great because as i say we've got we've got applicants in for seven weeks now and we haven't heard anything so right let's have let, let us have a look at it for you lisa thank you very much that's it that's all my questions right, thank, you. thank you um adrian adrian butcher is the next name i see adrian no, we can come back to you. I'm just aware of the time. If we move on to hello there, hello oh, there. Sorry, I... go for it. Can go you hear me now? Adrian. Yes, you can. Can you hear me now? Great. Sorry about that. I didn't know whether I needed to unmute myself or you were to do it. Uh, a few things actually. Um, one on the, I, I noticed that one thing that we were concerned about is how much detail about the actual vacancy you have to provide. We were building up full JDs ourselves, but I noticed Nick, you mentioned an application and then following that, if I understood that correctly, a vacancy template. Um, yes. Is that a two stage process? I mean, would it, would it make sense to just give us the vacancy template to start with? So we'll always give you perfectly compliant applications. Um, so probably two answers to that question Adrian but it's a really great one so it, it's um yes and no I guess I probably didn't explain it very well so the vacancy template so when you apply for kickstart 
you go through a standard application process um, and then you talk about the additionality in the jobs and, and, yeah, and all yeah. that great stuff. And then we make an assessment based on that. Now, in some situations, um, and it applies equally to gateways and employers, we would come back to you and say, can we have a bit more information, please? OK, fine. Now, let's, let's assume that that's all good, if that makes sense. Yeah, the fine. vacancy template is post approval and that is where you give us specific details of the jobs and where they are located if that makes sense now technically we could provide that to you as part of the application process the challenge then would be that does mean more work for you if that make you the royal you if that makes sense you know you as either an employer or a gateway and i'm not absolutely convinced whether it would necessarily um bear dividends it might what i will say is that we are already looking at that application process for gateways because i think what we're seeing at the kind of the decision stage is we're not making it very easy for gateways to give us the information that we need to make the assessment if that makes sense and yeah. that is causing a lot of rework because that, we're that, coming back to you that, yeah that's precisely the point i mean we'd like to do the for, for ourselves and the employer um, and for you, for that matter, <laughs> we'd like to do the job once and do it well right. um, to cut down work for everybody at the, at the different stages. So anyway, if I, that would be a thought I'd leave with you if I might. Please um, do. Um, by the way, a, a lot of the questions I hear coming up are on, on the your standard terms and conditions. So I, if people haven't looked at them recently, I'd suggest they do. Um, on the wage payment, again, just to me, it's the lead lag. Uh, and I was trying to speak to our own HR person about this. So we effectively finalize we, we have an external company runs payroll so we effectively finalize what people are going to get paid on the 16th of the month um it gets sent to the uh, payroll provider who comes back to us and said right this is exactly what's going to happen please agree and then they get paid at the end of the month um so i don't know and there's the rti isn't there so i don't know when um hmrc finds out when it gets to you that information and when you pay us so let's just say for example that somebody is paid at the end of the month yeah. What I'm trying to understand is, and, and, and that shows up on um, their payroll to um, HMRC, what's the lead lag between that and um, and, and the payment coming to the gateway? Uh, for us, it's, I, I think it's, it's doable so long as we can manage the expectation. Otherwise, as somebody else said, we'll have an employer saying, well, it's the 31st, where's my money, as it were? Yeah. So, um, again, I'll, I'm going to give you an answer that I think is right, but I'm going to have to take it away, Adrian, and confirm. I think okay. it's about six weeks. Six weeks? I so. Could... So, so to make sure I understand that, so the first payment, to the, assuming then the, the employer took somebody on on week one of the month and, the, and then after four um, weeks, the information gets through to HMRC. Are you saying six weeks after that, therefore no, 10 I'm, weeks after the commencement of the no. placement is when the payment comes through? No, sorry, Aidan, I'm not saying that. That's my that's my poor communication. I'm saying placement starts on the 11th of November, for argument's sake, and yep. then you should, but I will take it away and check it, Elizabeth, if that's okay, because I'm not 100% sure. sure. P uh, payment would then be made six weeks after the 11th, not 10. Okay, that's fine. That's a bit better. Thanks very much. <laughs> it's, a um, bit better. it's still not um, ideal. It's not, no, it's not 10. And um, let's just think. Oh, yeah. And we had um, again, I'm like many people. I'm in a, a chat that uh, that um, Elizabeth mentioned that's been I don't know how many hundreds of mentions it's had. But one of the questions somebody said they were asked for by the JCP is for an employer to give them a record of their last six months of hirings, what jobs they hired, what they paid. Uh, and I just think that's a huge barrier for employers. I don't know if that was um, how can I put it a, a slightly overzealous JCP or if in fact that is what you want. So I think, I think, so I mean, we are, and I'll say it again, I think we're in this, you know, place where we have stood this up at incredible speed. Yeah, of course. Job, yeah. Cent Job Centre Plus colleagues, I know, will have been trying to be helpful, if that yeah. makes sense. But we don't, um, we don't, we don't require that level of detail, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. In the application form, we expect to be able to see, we don't need anything like the number of people that have been hired, but it is just that point, Adrian, that I mentioned earlier, which is we, the employer needs to be able to demonstrate that um, in filling these jobs that they are truly additional and that they will not um <clears throat> that they will not um uh, uh uh replace people that have been made redundant or won't fill existing vacancies yeah no now, we, we have that on a standard declaration yeah 
Fine. So, so to be honest, you know, as I said, people will give us varying degrees of information and it's possible that we might come back and ask for more, if that makes sense. But ultimately, um, uh, what we see in some applications, I've just seen this, this, one, this one pop up in the sidebar, so I'll just answer it quickly now. It's that, you know, we've seen some organisations where they've said to us, actually, yes, we have made redundancies, but they were in more senior positions or they were in another part of the business. And yep. therefore, it, this isn't relevant to kickstart. And that's fine from that perspective. OK, just one more. Um, yeah. You'll be glad to know, Elizabeth. Um, we've had a, some employers say, actually, can you screen the applications for us? And we've said, yes, we for two reasons we do that. Uh, number one, um, um, we would offer that as, that, that as a service to them. But number two, you know, we'd never really just want to see be, as it were, just sent to an employer. We would work. Be, we're involved in a number of employability programs anyway, as Elizabeth knows. We would we would typically get the uh, details of the individual, work with her or him to make sure they're going to make the best op best of the op the um, interview opportunity. Um, and, and therefore, in that sense, we would want to provide that service to the individual and employer anyway, but we are being asked by some to screen. But as I understand it, the the um, the, um, the 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 J the CD CV sorry goes straight to the employer, um, and just as a corollary to that, there are these number aren't there as it were super JCPs who seem to have a regional responsibility in Kickstart, and then the local JCPs uh, how do, officers how do they work together? Uh, good question. I, I you'll have to just help me out, Adrian. The the, the latter, I I don't think that does exist. When you say super JCPs, what 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 do you mean? Can you give me more information? Yeah, well, I, I um, sort of um, said, OK, well, I, I was going to contact a, a bunch of J, JCP saying, hey, how do you want to work this? How does it best work for you? Is there a particular person you've nominated in this area? Obviously, some of that's not true because of the role of the job coach. So retros retrospectively, I know that's not true. But then they said, no, no, no. Actually, all of the um, uh, all of the applications are handled through, I think it's about 10 JCPs, one of whom, for example, seems to be all of London plus Essex. Uh, there's a list of them we got. I can send you the list if you like, and uh, maybe maybe you could clarify yeah. outside of this. Yeah, would you would you mind, Adrian? Could you send me the list? Because ultimately, what our role is fairly straightforward from my central Kickstart team. In so much as we get the applications in, we process them, and then we post them, and then it's for JCPs to decide how they handle that. If that makes sense. At the now, individual I, office level. Uh, so that say the Lewisham JCP rather than a whole of London JCP. No, it would be it would no no it would be ev every so if there is a vacancy available in a particular location, that's right. not restricted to one job centre if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. if we're talking about London, if there were vacancies in Streatham, for argument's sake, they would be made available to local JCPs in that area. We yeah. wouldn't say, and in fact, I don't think it's possible for us to say, for argument's sake. Um, Croydon Job Centre, you are the gatekeeper for all of these. It doesn't work in that way. OK, that's great. And on the po point of screening, by the way. Yes, uh, I'll have to, I will have to take that one away. I don't know the answer, Adrian, I'm afraid I'll have to come back to you on it. That'd be most helpful. Thank you. I've sent you an email anyway, as, oh, heart, fantastic. as okay. has heart of the nation, probably. Yes, very useful, though, Nick. Thanks very much. Doing a great yes. job. Pleasure. OK, um, I'm really aware of the time. Um, so I'd ask the people I bring in if you've got one really pertinent question, make sure that's the one you ask first. Um, because I'm, I suspect people are also emailing Nick. Um, but the next name I see is Julie Killick. Do you want to come in there, Julie? Thanks, Elizabeth. I represent a local authority who will be progressing a gateway application. First question is around the impact of the pandemic, I guess. I've reviewed all of the grant agreements, so apologies if this is covered somewhere within it. But if an area is subject to local restrictions, which might result in an employer temporarily closing or needing to reduce someone's hours, how does the kickstart scheme dovetail with, say, job retention scheme or job support scheme in those sorts of instances? So in... So a couple, couple, couple of things then. So we've we've kind of, I think, caught this ball just before it's dropped, to be honest. So what we're doing now is that before we upload a vacancy onto the provision service, which is what the work coaches use, we will have a conversation with the employer or gateway to say, look, what are your intentions about these young people? Can you still take them on if that makes sense? Um, and clearly, if the employer says to us, look, we can't because our doors are closed, then we will not progress that vacancy at that time. If uh, a young person is affected by uh, 
uh, a business closing, if that makes sense, then they can't be placed on furlough, I don't believe. Um, do you do, so? Do you mean, Julie, if if from now, if that makes sense, a business closed or something like that, and they had a young person? Yeah. So if an um, if a young person's employed, so that they're, they're on the placement, it's during the six months. Yeah. So from a, I guess from a future proofing point of view, to know if there is a risk exposure there around local restrictions, where would the young person stand in terms of their I guess their financial sustainability around an income? Would it switch from um, kickstart funding to the employer getting um, GRS or GSS just to understand how that would be managed? Yeah, no, it's a great question. And I will, and this is a, it's an easy thing for me to say, well, it's not really, because I, I just want to ask the question, to be honest, answer the question. But I, I know that there is a published policy on this, but I'm, I have to be honest, Julie, and say, I just can't reach into my mind and bring it at the moment. So, but, but we have thought about it because clearly we had some people start on kickstart and then there was a lockdown in England, if that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. I do know that there's a policy answer. I can't give it you at the moment. I yeah. will. If I, I am writing these down, Elizabeth, by the way. So I will come back and confirm it for you, Julie and colleagues. OK, thank you. And just one extremely brief question on the geographical location of placements. Yeah. Where does the assessment process and the employability support sit with home working? Sorry, Julie, what, 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 what do you mean by that? My fault, probably, but... but <clears throat> yeah, so either, if, either at the outset, when the job description is being pulled together, the employer is saying this is a homeworking role, therefore yeah. that local, local matching might be a little bit more complex because you can't sort of set out a postcode with that. And then also, I guess, if around local restrictions, if it was necessary to switch um, a job from working in the workplace to at home, how yeah. would that employability support fit in and to what extent would that need to be set out in the assessment process um so we i mean it's difficult because we're all living in such a you know if, if we if we if we were doing what we wanted to do, we'd all be sitting in a conference center somewhere wouldn't we um, and we're doing this on teams from various places so i mean we can't completely future proof it julie we judge the application as it's submitted to us, if that makes sense. If mm -hmm. something changes during the life of that placement and an employer decides that actually they're shifting their business model and they're moving it towards home working, then that isn't something that you'd need to come back to DWP and ask about, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it could come up as part of the conversation between the work coach and the um, uh, young person as the placement progresses, but mm -hmm. that isn't something that you'd need to come back to us and ask for permission, if that makes sense. Okay, thank you. No problem. Good questions, Julie. Sorry I couldn't answer them. <laughs> okay, so I'm aware that it's 17 minutes past 12 and we need to um, bring in the Greater Manchester Combined Authority at 20 past. So I'll take one more person and the next person I see is My Myra Cuthbertson. Elizabeth, sorry, it's yeah. Matt Ainsworth. Great. I'm more than happy oh, yeah. for these questions to to continue because I think people oh, probably yeah. get more out of Nick than they are right. from, okay. than they will well, from me I, if that's okay. I didn't want to reject you so um, shall we keep going then Matt and um, yeah that would be great yes. and maybe yeah. you could do you could do your piece at the next kickstart forum. Shall more than happy that? to. Lovely yeah, totally. thank you so much. So Cheers. let's bring in um, Myra Cuthbertson. Hi, hi there. Thank you, Matthew, for, for doing that. That's fantastic. Um, I, I've got a few different questions, but I suppose one of the things um, is an ask is there's there's an awful lot been going on in terms of information, and I've certainly gleaned quite a bit this morning and learnt things that I wasn't even made aware of, and I've attended a number of events with DWP. So is it possible to put up an FAQs on the um, Kickstart government government website. Uh, there, there is one actually, um, Moira. Uh, there is one. There is one there already. I think the the challenge is just going to be keeping it updated as we go along, if that makes sense. But there is there is already an FAQ there. Right. I've got to say I've not seen that um, yet. Um, I've got uh, the other thing I would say is I do struggle a bit with the website um, navigating around it. It can be pretty difficult. Um, but that's great. That, that that's there. Um, several different questions. Um, 
I suppose again uh, linked again to the the fifteen hundred pound wraparound. I know there's questions around the, the wages being paid, but the same question goes in terms of that fifteen hundred pound wraparound money. Um, uh, what what's the, the the time lag then between the young person actually st starting and that co being confirmed to when the the gateway organisation receives that wraparound money? Uh, ten. It's a maximum of ten working days. Team working days. Yeah. That's that's fantastic. Okay, and again, same thing. There's been talk, an awful lot of talk about a job description template. Um, can we get one? Can can we see it? Can something be put on the website that people can actually access it? Because again, I think it would be very useful in terms of the gateway organisations in um, creating the information that's required. Um, because for us, certainly one of the things that we've been doing is we've been doing it as we've been going along and as we've been getting that information. So it would be so much better if we had everything up front. You mean the vacancy template, Moira? Yes. Uh, we'll. I will take it away and look at it. I will. I mean, we. I, I mean, I, I don't know if I said it clearly enough earlier. We are looking at the gateway application process at the moment because yeah. I think I mentioned. I think the challenge that I've got looking at the decisions board, looking at it from the decisions board piece, is that when we look at the applications and we're looking at them, it's a bit different with the employer ones because with the employer ones we can look at them easily and actually think, well, actually this is, you know, this is not of the right standard. But I worry a bit that with the gateway process we make it quite hard for gateway organisations to deliver to the standard that we need. So I will absolutely take it away, Moira, because I've no, I've no, I've no, I've no problem doing it. I guess <coughs> I think the rationale behind not doing it initially was that it just is more work, if that makes sense. But given we might be phoning you up anyway to say, look, can you tell us some more about these? Maybe yeah. it's it's better to do it that way. So I would definitely take it away. Absolutely, that's great. Can I just also add in one of the things um, I know quite a few organisations have said the same thing. We did put in an expression of interest way back as a gateway. We've heard absolutely nothing at all. All we got was the reference number and we've not heard anything. We're not on the website as a gateway organisation. So did you did you apply as an, did you come through on the EOI, uh, uh, Moira, or did you put in a full application? Um, no, I've got to say because it wasn't actually myself that did it, so I don't, I don't honestly know which it was. So if you put in an EOI, that isn't the same as making a gateway application, if that makes sense. That's probably it because we got a reference number similar to. So again, again, no more. Yeah? You've got my email address, as is everybody else in the world by now. Um, and on that basis, if uh, <laughs> if uh, if you're bothered, if if you go back more to your organisation, someone says yeah. no, no, we definitely put one in. Drop me a line. We'll find out what's going on. Okay, right. And last couple of questions. Um, Evidence. What was the type of evidence that you're looking for gateways to either hold or to gather in terms of either that £1,500? Because this is there an expectation of there being evidence there in spend of that £1,500 and also just in general as well? Ask me again. Sorry, it, I, I'm getting lots of pings. My fault, Maura, not yours. Sure. No, 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 no. It was a... Um, the the fifteen hundred pounds. So, yeah. what evidence are the gateway expected to hold in terms of the spend, both either by the gateway and or the employer? Um, we don't have a standard for that, to be honest, Maura. If I'm being absolutely candid, you know, we've we've we go through the assessment process to demonstrate that the organisation is. Well, it'd be wrong to say is of good standing, isn't it? Because that 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 then implies that organisations that fail spotlight are not of good standing, and I'm not saying that. But we go through the due diligence checks early on in the process, Maura, um, and we. Um, uh, 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 assess against that and then ultimately um, we conduct the checks that we do as part of the assessment process and then we pay the funds um, and it but it is for you as the gateway organization to ensure that you act in good faith I guess we don't we won't we won't come back to you and say what have you spent the 1500 pounds on right so you're not you're not expecting to see itemized um, invoices or anything like that no, I don't think so. But again, I see someone said this sentiment's not reflected in the funding agreement. So, Elizabeth, again, maybe it's just one for me to take away. Um, ah, you might be right there. Can I take it away, Elizabeth? Sorry. I mean, I don't I don't know the grant agreements yeah. in PCR, to be honest. Right. 
Okay, and uh, I suppose a last question for me just now is, um, it's a question we've put in before, is if a young person whilst they are employed um, go off sick and are paid statutory sick pay, does that impact the, the payment to the, the employer and or gateway? So I am not clued up enough on SSP. The question, the 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 sentiment would be, Moira, what would it, what would, how would it affect a normal employee? If that makes sense, you would still continue to pay them. If they're paid, if they're paid SSP, that's claimed by the employer, or potentially claimed by the employer. Yeah, I don't, I don't know but the answer. Not always the case. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer. I'm going to have to take it away. Keep going, Maura. Let's see if you've got a question I can answer. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, the, the other one was, um, I suppose, around the grant funding agreements, because obviously there's, there's three separate ones on, on the website. Um, so the ex is there an expectation that each of the gateways will give a copy of the, the grant agreement for the gateway and their employers is that we, we have to share that with each of our employers along with anything else because that's it's... certainly the way that I tended to read it. And I think Vanda asked that question early on to be honest um, I think I think the understand I, th I think sorry I think the answer to that question is yes to be honest um, so I think we would expect you to have um, corresponding agreements with the organizations that you are representing because uh, we as we said we will knock on your door as a gateway if something's going wrong. Right. Okay, that's I'll, I'll, I'll put that to an end at the moment because I think everybody else needs that opportunity to ask some questions as well. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Maura. And I'm can I just say, Maura, I'm sorry I couldn't answer some of your questions. Some of them go into detail that I'm just not. I just don't have enough in my brain. Okay, no, that's that's no problem. Um, as, as you said, in terms of the email, <laughs> unfortunately, you will be receiving quite a number. I suspect. <laughs> It doesn't matter. And, you know, genuinely, genuinely, you know, we are we, we you know, I personally and we want to help as much as we can. Um, and I know people have been waiting a long time and I sense some of the frustration in the sidebar. We, we are doing absolutely everything we can to get through this. But particularly with gateway applications, it's a completely different beast to an employer application, because just to give you an idea and I, I, I won't share our kind of our operational pain with you. But when we pick up an employer application, we know it is when we pick yeah. up a gateway application we don't know what it looks like until we pick it up if that makes sense okay. so it could be one gateway with one employer it could be one gateway with 25 employers and yeah. clearly the assessment process for an employer versus gateway is is considerably different to be honest no i i, I certainly think um, all of us here will very much appreciate that but um i suppose for for us it's it's the employers we're working with and we want to be able to feed back to them I totally, and that's, that's sometimes yeah. the issue is we don't have that that knowledge or that information that we can actually feed back to them to see yeah. what's actually currently yeah. going on to to totally with you more I, I know you're kind of you're, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place to be honest yeah, yeah. Okay. okay thank you thank you okay. So I can see seven hands raised and this is going to be the end of the, the marathon that you're running, Nick. So um, I might ask people if they could limit themselves to their one most important question and we'll start with Tristan. So the order that I see people in so that you're ready is Tristan, Lucy, Louise, Natalie, Craig, Lana and finally Hammer. So can we start with Tristan? Yeah, hello Nick. Um, hello, thanks Justin. again for uh, taking time out and having to answer quite a few questions. Uh, my my question is about the process of a gateway. So um, we're nine weeks in um, since we did our first application, and I'll just go through what we did. So we did the online Kickstart application on the gov.uk website, and about six weeks later, we got a spreadsheet with a weird KDS zero eight wow. number, which we had yeah. to list all the employers numbers company's house all that send that off three weeks ago and then yeah. nothing so what i wanted to ask is what stage are we at and also what stage have we got coming and how long before we can start as i said it's been nine weeks have you i'm not being funny tristan have, have you have you have you dropped me a line with your details because i, I, I mean I won't, I, I, i've just I, done it now but we've just, got 177 vacancies and 70 employers and obviously that they believe that it was starting in November and now we're having to keep saying we're waiting yeah. on a document waiting on a document 
do I say to them we're looking at December? Do I say we're looking at January? What's, they they um, want to kind of know what they're doing. Yeah, no, I accept that. It, it's not it's I, it's not a question I'm going to speculate on, Tristan, because I'd need to have, I'd need to have a look at your application, see where it was. The situation would it would differ depending on where you were within the process. And until we have a look, I I couldn't tell you. And I'm not being unhelpful, but I don't want to say to you, well, you'll have no. it in three in two weeks time if you're not going to get it. But what comes after the spreadsheet though? What what my what's coming next? So you've just so what have you so tell me exactly what you filled in, Tristan? Have you filled in the so huge green spreadsheet with a KDS AO1 number with right. company name, companies, house so details, all, uh, postcode, job numbers. So that was that was all the employers, right? So that was the employers you're representing. Okay. So where yeah. you are now then <coughs> is you are you are between you're obviously between application and your application is waiting to go to the decision board in that case. So if we've asked you for the information about the employers and the vacancies and all of that sort of stuff, then that means that your application is is, is currently being assessed uh, yeah. and should be making its way towards the decision board. Um, well, yeah, full stop. We, you know, that, 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 I think someone asked this earlier, actually, we meet three times a week for a minimum of an hour and a half to look at the sample of applications that we get. And that's the trigger for then approving and rejecting, if that makes sense. I think we might, given some of the volumes we've got, think about, about a slightly different process. But that's where you are, Tristan. You are within that assessment process waiting to go to decision board. But if you've emailed me, I'll tell you exactly where you are. And if the decision is yes, is yes. that when we get the job descriptions? If the decision is yes, we come out with you with the with the gateway uh, grant agreement, if that makes sense. You then fill that in. Well, you fill it in, sorry. You sign it. You give us the vacancy template and then away you go. OK, brilliant. As I said, we've got 177 vacancies in our first batch. Our second batch I sent off this week is another 60 vacancies. So we could have 300 by the time. We get approved just, and just, that's a lot I, of employers I, to disappoint. It, it probably won't help at all, Tristan, but it, it's just because I can occasionally remember the odd name. What what's I'm not saying I will, what's your organization name? What's the application? Brent name? Council. It's what, sorry? Brentworks. Brentworks part of Brent Council. So we're a local authority. Okay. No, I can't. I've, I've, Brent doesn't alter. We had Tower Hamlets go through the other day, which is not helpful because it's not you. Um but um that's just favoritism. <laughs> <laughs> it could it could because i'm an east london boy at heart but um no i'm no, no nothing wrong with brent le, le, if i will we will find it out for you tristan bear with us we'll find it out for you okay i appreciate that thank you not at all thanks for your question hey lucy hello sorry i'm just unmuting um so my question my burning question is um if we have if can we put an application in as an employer but then um have the applicants be employed by us but then work in other organizations how would that work lucy so for example if um we're also a gateway um and some of our gateway some of our employers aren't um won't go through the spotlight checks yeah. so can we employ them ourselves um so we have all of the employment um but then they actually work in another organization no i don't think you could it might be one we'd have to take up offline i think but i, I don't think so so you you would put the application in as an employer yeah as an employer and then, and then the young people would be employed outside of your organization they would be employed by us um but they would be working in another organization uh, oh, 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 okay. So, the, so you, but you would be the employer. Yes, we would be in the employer, um, but then they would be, I suppose, for want of that word, a bit like an employment agency. <coughs> right. I mean, I think, I think we'd, 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 we'd want to look very carefully at that sort of a bid. To be honest, Lucy, um, I, I don't think I would say it necessarily wouldn't go through. But clearly, if there was going to be a position where we were paying an employer. And then the employer was then collecting a fee from another employer. Um, I think we'd, we'd want to have a conversation about what that looked like. So I'm not saying it's completely impossible, um, but I think we would we would look very hard at the additionality in that sort of a situation, I think. OK, we, we wouldn't be charging the other employers for it. We would literally just be just just be supporting them, because obviously quite a lot of the um, small businesses can't um 
uh, can't, can't use the kickstart scheme because yeah. they're not they won't go through the spotlight checks i guess i guess the the yeah i i don't think so lucy because i mean in that scenario normally we'd expect a gateway application but clearly if what you're saying and, and by the way i appreciate the question um but if um if what you're saying is that these are employee these are employers who otherwise would not have got through the process then i think the answer would be no right okay but if you come in as a gateway then clearly that's very different. But if you're applying as a if you're applying as an employer and you're then looking as part of that process to provide young people to another employer who might who would otherwise have failed, no, we couldn't do that. Right. So if they if they passed as a gateway, then they, they would need to be a gateway then basically. Yes, basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, no problem. Thank you for your question. Okay. Thank you. I'm really aware that we're eating into the next session now. So um, if we take Lucy. No, we've had Lucy, Natalie, and then Louise. And I think at that point, we may have to call it a day, given that we've got the generous offer from Nick that you can not email him directly. So um, if it can be your one burning question, Natalie, and then yep. Louise, one question. Yeah. So very quick question. Are there three, three application processes? One, expression of interest, done, tick. Two, you go online, you fill out the form, you've got your 5,000 characters to describe all the different um, yeah. organisations that you are representing as a gateway application. Yeah. Are you describing today a third application process, which is a gateway application? No, or I don't think I, is, is, is number two that that gateway application that you keep referring to? Because I think some people have put an expression of interest in and are waiting to be approved as a gateway before they actually then go and process these um, vacancies, if you like. And from what I'm gathering today, that's that's an incorrect thing to do that you should kick on and put your gateway application through. You're right. Yeah. You should. Yeah. That, uh, that was it. And then just to the, the, the point that I think Lucy was trying to make is if you were um, a gateway and you're offering a number of um, positions on behalf of employers, if you are a larger organization, um, potentially in the training sec um, potentially kind of in, in the training world, and you wanted to employ yourself 30 Kickstarters, and then there was opportunity for them to go, those Kickstarters to go out and work at, on kind of temp contracts for a number of different organizations, but nobody would be charging anyone for that. It would that person would be kind of behaving like a super temp. I believe it's the same as Edeco are doing for right. um, the FSB. So they're setting a really quite large precedent there, aren't they? So I, I think it'd be interesting, Nick, to to explore that. Yeah, their yeah, models. Natalie, yeah, Natalie you, you're going to have to let me take it take it away because I think there are lots of different permutations of this one, isn't there? Um, so yeah. you know, in so much as you know, the employer charging another employer, whether as you, I use the term very good, actually, Natalie, the, the kind of super temp perspective, yeah. you're going to have to just let me take that one away because I think there are too many there are too many different versions of that model for me to be yeah. able to comment off the top of my head, if I'm yeah. being honest. Because we're an employability business, we don't want to charge any any age. Yeah. We don't want to charge any end employers anything. We just want to be able to offer people work placements. So we'll, we'll leave that with you anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's me. Thank you for the question. All right. Okay. If we just take one question from Louise, uh, and then I think we need to draw this to a close. Thank you. Hi. Well, okay, I'm going to go to the next person. I can see, and we'll have one final question from. No, no, oh, no, no, no. There. Please no. go. <laughs> Hello? 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 Please don't cut me off. Please don't cut me off. <laughs> I cannot be muted. <laughs> um, so, um, Nick, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I get very frustrated because I made my application as a gateway. Back in September, I've made hundreds of applications. I, 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 I've done all of the, uh, so I did the application. I've done the, the spreadsheet listing all the company names. I've contacted my, uh, the, I've, I've got the reference numbers. I've contacted the job centres. I've contacted my local representatives. Um, I've done everything that you've asked me to do, and yet I still don't get a straight answer. I have emailed you, but my concern here is, um, Nick, 
Surely there should be a proper process for us to follow. Just emailing you isn't fair. You are clearly going to be inundated, and that's not a proper process, you know. Um, I emailed you about 10 seconds after this seminar started, so I expect to get a phone call more soon. I'll be top of the list. Yeah? Absolutely. Yes. I do. I'm making the point, right? So, um, but it's wrong. Where is a formal process for, for following up your application and where you are. I mean, I run a multi-million pound business. I employ lots of people. Um, there's no reason why I wouldn't pass due diligence. So I don't get it. I did what you asked me to do. I'm a private... I, ha I can't afford um, to... I'm, I'm advertised on the government website as a kickstart. Yeah. I'm getting yeah. lots of companies contacting me day in and day out. I've got an organisation who are very busy, and yet we're being distracted by this... Um, and we want to be efficient. So it's not fair. You're not treating us fairly. If who, you who don't respond to us. Who are you, Louise? We're an accountancy firm. It's called Number Mill Accounting. Oh, yes, I've seen, I've seen you. Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, I so we're specialists We're specialist in payroll. So we're great at processing payments. And if, if you ask me, you should have got gateways to be payroll processors. That's what you should have done. Yeah. Um, we, we, we know how to do this, yeah? So there's a payroll process, and then there's training and wraparound training, and then there's employers and giving people work. And to me, that's the sort of roles, uh, or the roles that are involved. So, so what I'm saying to you is there needs to be a formal process for understanding where you are and who you're supposed to be speaking to. I have spoken to loads of people. Every week I speak to some very lovely DWP people, Lovely job centre people, very nice, but of no use whatsoever. Yeah, really nice, but useless. You know, I can't hear you, Louise. You've gone on, you've gone on mute, Louise. Don't know what's happening. It looks like everybody's been muted. No, I think, I um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, got yeah. You. We yeah. do yeah. need to draw this to a close now, though, because we've got okay. the next panel well, ready. Can I, can I ask one last question? That's a, well, number one, if you answer the question, there needs to be a formal process to ask your questions, just not you, Nick, because, you know, we can't all rely on you. I want no. to rely on you. But... <laughs> no, no. And I thank you, Louise. Thanks very much. And, and what I will say is, you know, in the interim, you know, you, I'm happy for you to rely on me, quite frankly, but I do accept that, you know, on the odd day when I might take a day's leave, that's not really going to work. So I think, Louise, it was, it was supposed to be um, uh, covered in what I said earlier, which is that from the end of this week, we will have kickstart people in each JCP district that should have access to where an individual application is, which means you should not need to either email me direct as much as I'm very happy to hear from you and other colleagues. So that process is in place. But the other thing to bear in mind is clearly the other thing that we need to do is if we get through the work in a good amount of time, then you shouldn't be needing to chase us and ask what's going on. But I do accept that that isn't, you know, we're not quite where we want to be, but we have put that process in place. Um, Louise is all I can say. And I can only apologise for the fact that it's taken your application a long while senior email so we will get on it okay i've got loads of other questions but i'm I, i'm I'll got his it. email address <laughs> yeah. Yeah. okay um i'm afraid we are going to have to bring this to a close um i'd just like to thank nick it's been a really good session i've seen the weeks and weeks of questions going on in the chat from the fourth of september call and you've answered so many of those we've got some really good information i think people have really appreciated your honesty when you couldn't answer today and you've said you'll come back to us and um, i'd like to apologize